Marissa, uh, thank you for that Marissa, uh, testimony. Yeah, we're going to um, get into the sermon part of the service now. Um, if you do have your Bibles in, you can follow me at Mark, the uh, book, book of Mark, chapter 4, verse uh, 35. You know, that's where I'm going to start reading from 35 to 41. Uh, Mark 4, 35 reads, In the same evening, uh, Jesus uh, you know, suggested they cross over to the other side of the lake, with Jesus already in the boat. And they left the crowd behind and set sail along with the few other boats that followed. As they sailed, a storm formed. The winds whipped it up huge waves that broke over the bow, filling the boat with so much water that even the expert sailors among them were sure they were going to sink. Jesus was back in the stern of the boat, sound asleep on a cushion. When the disciples shook, him awake, saying, shouting over the storm, saying, Jesus, Master, don't you care that we're going to die? In verse 39, we read, saying, Jesus got up, shouted words into the wind, and commanded the waves by saying, That's enough. Be still. And immediately the winds died down to nothing, and the way stopped. Jesus had asked them that, how can you be so afraid? After all you've seen, where is your faith? Verse 41 reads that the disciples were still afraid, slowly coming to grips with what they had seen. So the disciples were speaking to one another, saying, who is this Jesus? How, how can it be that he has power over even the wind and the waves? Yes, uh, yeah, I have one, wanted to uh, talk to you about, not about the wind and the waves, but I wanted to talk to you about the last thing that they said to Jesus here. Well, they said to Jesus, uh, who, who is this Jesus? Most people know know Jesus as as the I want to say as a man that know how to do healings and uh, uh and deliverances, and they know the Jesus know who know how to provide and all those other things, and so those are normally things that we I want to say normally will tie Jesus to when it comes to the uh, ministry form uh, 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 of of who he is. But however, this part of Jesus was a part that they never seen before. And the part they never seen before was the, was the uh, practical part of Jesus. And, and when I say practical, I'm talking about the real part of Jesus. Yeah. We all have people who know, who know them as being the, 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 no, the 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 uh, pastor of the church, and we know those who are deacons to our uh, uh, deacon boards, and, and we know who are the ushers and, and the musicians in the church. But however, how do we? How much do we know them personally? Now I'm talking about outside of the church or outside of their their, their daily thing. Do you know them well enough to know that they have a a compassionate heart. Do you know them close enough to know that they, I want to say, know how, how to stop your problems if they do rise? So with Jesus' situation here, uh, I refer to Jesus here in this story as a as an uh, incubator. And the uh, incubator it, it is a de device to provide a safe space, a controlled space for infants to live while their vital organs 
developed. Yeah, unlike a simple, want to say, basket net and incubator provides an environment that can be adjusted to provide the ideal temperature as well as the perfect amount of oxygen, a hue, a melody, and light. So here, when Jesus, when when they was having problems with with the boat, yeah, they ran to Jesus. And they was, you know, uh, wonder why Jesus sleep. And so when when they went to go woke him, they went to go wake him, but to you know probably tell them to to stop the boat or tell them to turn the boat around or something to, to solve the problem. But you see, Jesus uh, uh, didn't tell them to do neither one. He he stood up, and, and we instantly see him uh, turn our havoc situations. In, yeah, into a calming environment. And that all came from because we, we was in the midst of Jesus. Not him on the Sunday when he's preaching in the pulpit or, or when he's out casting out demons or healing sick. We was with him personally, you know, when we was in a, a personal situation. And so how many times have we ever allow I want to say Jesus and other people which to speak into our lives uh, into our personal lives to help us with to get a more more calm uh I want to say to, to, to help us feel like we're safe but to help us feel like we we're we're no longer surrounding around danger and so people may only know you you no, know, as being the person you no know, who like to fight or who person who you know who like like to get drunk or person who who like to get high, but however, but then those are the people that I normally meet that are the most kindest people, and so those are the ones who even though they have a drinking problem, even though they have a fighting, you know, uh, 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 uh I want to say, yeah, they they yeah they may be hot temperature, but those are normally the people who are normally caring the most for, for other people. And so here, here in, in, in Isaiah 26 and 3, uh, Isaiah spoke and said that thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusts in thee. And so, no, the Lord isn't just one to provide you a safe and a controlled space, but he wants to also not physically just physical space, but he wants to provide you with 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 with, with a perfect peace in mind, mentally, uh, in the side of our hearts. And so here, uh, so the, the this side of Jesus is again is is a part that his disciples didn't know of him. It's because they only knew him for for the the miracles and, and the him taking a five thousand and, and and you know feeding the those people, but they never knew him personally, and so this was a uh, introduction to them getting to know who who Jesus really is. So so just ask yourselves that have you spent enough personal time with Jesus Jesus to know that he's a he's a uh, incubator inside of our life, meaning meaning that you know uh, that that we that we interact with him so much that we intend to show other people you know our 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 uh, compassionate side, or we able to allow Jesus to uh, show him uh, uh, his his safe side or his compassionate side, and so. Yeah, no, I just uh, want you to be blessed with that. Now, I just wanted to read you the, the sevenfold uh, blessings here. You were talking about being an incubator. Did you remember when you was born, you was in one? Yeah. Uh, incubator? Yeah. We brought you through, didn't we? Yeah. And look where you're at now. Trust that old way. There's no other way. You can be happy in Jesus. Uh, 
uh, I was going to read the sevenfold blessings. For, uh, no, I speak blessings of one, a health for you and, and your family. Uh, number two, I speak blessings of deliverance from any habits that you have in your life. Number three, I speak blessings of peace to your mind from anybody or anything that may be disturbing you. Number four, I speak blessings of salvation to any friends or loved ones. Uh, number five, I speak blessings of comfort to any person that's hurting, that's lonely, that's bereaved, or that's confused. Number six, I speak blessings of finances, debt cancellations, prosperity, uh, economic empowerment to all of God's people according to his riches and glory. And then number seven, I speak blessings of anointings and promotion in your life to complete your assignment to move forward in your purpose.